Uh, that's going to be Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 31. All right, Sister Jill is in the house tonight. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that my faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, The Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall crow shall not crow this day, before thou shalt thrice den- deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment, and buy one. For I said unto you, That, that, this, that this that is written, ye must be accomplished in me. And he has reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an, have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I just look at somebody real quick and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I'm so glad Jesus is praying for me. I'm so glad Jesus is praying for me. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I'm so glad Jesus is praying for me. I'm so glad Jesus is praying for me. Hallelujah. And and we're looking here where, where Jesus is just really talking to, he's talking to Peter and he's telling Peter, he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as we. But I pray for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And how many know that even as we've been talking about the kingdom of God, we've been talking about the cross, the blood, we've been talking about the grace of God, how many know that there is still an enemy out there, amen, Amen. whose name is Satan, Amen? amen, and he is after the people of God, amen. Bless God. So, I just really want to encourage the people of God today to help you to understand, hallelujah, that we do have the victory in Christ Jesus. We have the Word of God. We have everything that we need in Christ Jesus. But we've got to be sober and be vigilant. Amen? And at the same time, understand that Christ is praying for you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. How's He praying for me? He prays for us in the book of Romans. The Bible says he's making intercession for us. Amen? Bless the Lord. But here's the interesting thing is he says, listen. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. When you look at a sifter and and, and you, you put flour in a sifter or whatever you put in a sifter, it breaks it down to the bare raw material. It takes out all the other stuff. And that's what the enemy wants to do with many of us. He wants to take out all the good stuff out of us. Come on, come on. Amen? He, he wants to really break us down to absolutely nothing. My Lord. But Jesus said, listen. He said, I pray for you. And when I pray for you, I pray for this one thing. That your faith didn't fail. Wow. Now, Jesus, why didn't you rebuke the storm? And why didn't you rebuke the persecution? And why didn't you rebuke all of these things that came my way? Why didn't you rebuke all those things? And Jesus said, look, I, I've got to get to the center of this thing, which is your faith. He's going to fight you. Yes, he is. He's going to hit certain things. Yes, he will. There will be things that happen in your life. But what still has to be intact when the storm is over is your faith. Come on. Come on. Right. Amen? Amen? What still has to remain intact is your faith in Christ? Is your faith in God? Is your faith to say that even though, who, who was that that said, though he slay me, Job, yet will I trust him? Job lost everything. Family, house, everything. Everything was gone. All because Satan decided to come up and just make a little wager with God. God said, have you considered my servant Job? He said, but you got that hedge around him. And God said, okay, I'm going to remove those things 
You can touch everything, but you can't touch his soul. Wow. Hallelujah. And God began to test, and, and not, not God, but the enemy began to come and begin to, begin to test Job and begin to break things down and begin to really destroy things. He was really trying to sift him. And see, the thing is, God knew what he had put in Job. He already knew. See, here's the deal. God's not going to allow you to go through anything that you can't handle. Yes. Amen. Amen? He will not put any more on us than we can bear. Amen? Amen. I don't know how many have been through some serious fiery trials? Amen. I put my feet up if I could. <laughs> but here's the deal: is that when the fire dies down and everything is gone, you're still standing. He said that I prayed for you, Peter. I didn't pray that the storm would be rebuked. I didn't pray that it wouldn't happen. But I pray that when he comes to sift you, that when he sifts you, guess what's going to be left at the end of it? Your faith. Yeah. Amen? Tell somebody, I'm saying, God, Jesus is praying for me. He said, I prayed for you that your faith fell not. And when you are converted, when you, when you get that change, you go and you strengthen your brother. And amen? Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is, is that Peter begins to tell Jesus, he said, look, I'm going to go with you, man. I, I got your back. <laughs> amen? You ever have one of those strong seasons in Christ where you just feel like you can just conquer anything with God? I got you, Jesus. Call on me. Jesus began to tell him, he said, look, Peter, I'm telling you, the cock's going to throw, the, the cock is going to crow this day before you. Three times you're going to deny me. Amen. Now, how many know for somebody like Peter, Peter was probably like, he was tripping. <laughs> Hallelujah. But sometimes there comes a trial that pushes you up against the wall. And causes you to almost wonder, if God, can God do it? Will God do it for me? Oh, I'm not talking about no people that have been, been pressed before. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, see I, you, you, has anybody ever been pressed against the wall before? Amen. Where some things have come against you and it almost caused you to wonder. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Here's another thing. Is that even with our faith, we have faith for everybody else, but we don't have faith for ourselves in some, some situations. Amen? Amen? I can believe God all day and all night with Brother Tim. I can shout and praise God and believe it with him. And then when God says, I'll keep you too. Oh, <laughs> brother, will you better pray for me and lay hands on me, brother? Matter of fact, stay over here, brother. Stick with me, man. Don't go nowhere. And God is telling you, I got you. I got you. I got you. I, I, I am your source. I am your strength. I am all that you need. Oh, I don't know, brother Will. Oh, Jesus, brother, what scriptures you got for me today? Oh, God, help me, Jesus. But I can tell Tim... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And I can preach it to him. And then when the sister shows up for me, good God of mercy, what is this? Jesus, why is this happening to me today? I pray all the time. I fast all the time. I witness to people. I love people, Jesus. I'm living my life for you. Why is this thing happening to me? Why? Because he's coming to sift you as we. But what needs to still be standing is your faith. That's right. He makes things look completely different than what God said. Amen. Sometimes he can put a mirage up to you and make it look like it's not what God said it's going to be. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, you know, maybe the, maybe the Lord has promised you and said, you know what, by this time next year, you are going to be in a different place with me. 
By this time next year, you're going to see some things begin to turn around in your family and in your finances. And you're going to be going to see some things turn around even in you. And closer to that time, it looks sometimes like it's worse than it's ever been. And it makes you say, did God say that? <laughs> so then we go get everybody to pray because we need a word now. When, when God first spoke, we were shouting and huckabucking and saying, yeah! yeah. Now it's closer to the time of God getting ready to release what he's getting ready to do. And the enemy has turned it around. Now I'm asking Sister Shanta to pray, uh, Brother Kevin pray, Dennis pray. If y'all hear anything, please tell me. Brother, you pray too. If you, if you hear anything, please let me know. Because this thing don't look quite like God said it. Tell somebody, he's just sifting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just sifting. But see, when, it, when the end result is, now I have to begin to believe God for me. I can have all the faith for somebody else. But guess what? God made promises to me too. Amen? Why would he not do what he promised me and do what he promised somebody else? Because somebody, your faith has to stand. See, your faith can go through a serious trial sometimes. And this is what Jesus is saying to Peter. He's saying, listen, I pray for you that your faith would not diminish. I pray for you that your faith would stand. I pray that after everything went down, and thank God the prayer worked because guess what? After everything Peter went through, guess where he came back to? Jesus. Hallelujah. So sometimes a situation or a circumstance doesn't dictate your relationship with God. I'm going to make that a little bit more plain. Sometimes when you go through things, it doesn't mean that God is angry with you. It doesn't mean that you're out of fellowship. Sometimes you're just in a place of sifting. Amen? He desired to sift us as wheat, but Jesus prays for us. The Bible says he makes intercession for the saints of God. Hallelujah. So when our faith gets built up and our faith is standing, amen, that has to be the one thing intact to still say God still is and still can. I don't care what you bring my way, God still is and he still can and he will. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't care what you're going through. God still can. God still can. He will. He will. So stand on it. So stand on it. Hallelujah. Amen. See, when you're going through something and, and, and that sifting process is taking place, the sifting process doesn't always feel good. No, it don't. The sifting process hurts. The sifting process causes people to come against you. The sifting process causes you to be unpopular with sometimes. The, the, the sifting process causes people to wonder and say, what is wrong with you? You're always praying, always going to that church, always setting about God, always doing something for Jesus. What is wrong with you? Nothing. I know that's right. Nothing. It's the sifting process that comes in when those different voices come in and tell you that God is not who he said he is. It's those different voices that come in and say, are you sure this is the right thing for you, sister? It, it's, those, it's those different voices that come in and say, oh, no, 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 make no mistake. You, no thing's going to change for you. Oh, no, this is, this is not going to work for you. Uh, what, you what you're seeking after, what you're trying to get forth, and what you're trying to bring forth is not going to work. But the devil is a liar. Yes. Yes. Because here's the deal, is that sometimes even the sifting process is good. What do you mean the sifting process? The sifting process is good because it humbles you. When the enemy finished sifting you, and the only thing that's standing is your faith, it's in Christ. Anybody ever been, been beat up by the enemy before? And you leaned on God more than ever. Amen. Thought you could take him. Huh? Still getting beat up. Amen! Yeah! 
and he takes you through that season and he's working you over. Because at first, you know, when, when, we, when we hear, when we come into the service and we give God praise and things like that, it, it's feeling good and we're around brothers and sisters and we feel like we're strong and we can whip the enemy. You know, and I tell Sister Jill, and, hmm, all things are possible to him that believes. <laughs> yes, yeah, sister, I'm going to go ahead and conquer the devil this week. Yeah, I'm going to stop on his head. Yes, I am. <laughs> he ain't got me. <laughs> no, 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 no.